All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at a model boat, radio control boat, the UDI-018. Uh, here's a picture of everything that comes it, with it in the package. It comes ready to run with the radio, the 3S 2500 LiPo, and a charger. And here's a look at some of the running hardware on the back. You see it comes with little adjustable trim tabs. And here's a look inside. You have a battery tray. And they did use the real AMAS brand XT60 Plus connectors. Here's a look at the brushless uh, motor and the water cooling lines that run kind of cool the mounting block for that. Here's a steering servo. It is a standard hobby grade uh, steering servo, which is nice. All the parts in here are pretty much hobby grade. And here's the little balance charger that comes with it. Uh, it's kind of slow, but if you have a charger on hand, obviously you can use that instead. And here's a look at the spare channels on the radio, channel 3 and 4. Three, uh, channel 4 does control the lights on the back. And of course you do have trim, dual rate, and reversing on the radio. Uh, pretty standard stuff, but it all gets the job done, works well, especially for the price. So now we'll go ahead and put it in water and run it. I'm just kind of going to drive it in the bayou out here in front of the house. And you see it does get up and move pretty good. Runs pretty fast for a little 3S setup. And now... We're going to see how durable it is, and as we submerge it there, and it pops back up, you can see it's pretty uh, predictable and stable, and it handles that just fine. I kind of didn't mean to do that, but I went ahead and left it in there just to uh, demonstrate how well the boat does work. And even though we completely submarined it, ran it completely under the water, it popped right back up. See, so we have a little piece of uh, grass there stuck in the prop. Just kind of wanted to clean that out, and we'll go back to running it. And once again, like I said, you can see it does move pretty good. And it's very stable. Runs nice and flat and smooth. Doesn't kind of porpoise or skip around or anything. And it steers just fine. You can run it wide open and crank the steering over. And it handles it just fine without breaking loose or spinning out or capsizing or anything crazy like that. It's just real smooth and predictable. Which I like to see that in a boat. Um... So, getting back to the spare channels on the radio, you do have one three position switch that works the LEDs on the back. They uh, can be off, on, solid, or on flashing. I just leave them off, I don't really see the point unless you're running it in low light or night or something like that. But you can see there, we are running it a little bit slower than full, speed, full throttle for a minute there, just to show that it can be done. Um, and using those dual rates, you can actually limit the amount of power and steering you have. So you can, if you wanted to hand it to, you know, a young child or someone or a novice or whatever, just kind of want to get a feel for running the boat uh, before cranking everything out to max, you can limit those. Limit both the speed and steering sensitivity. So that's kind of nice. And you see now we've kind of switched over to, we're driving it from the uh, dock now up over the water kind of higher up gives a little bit better vantage point and see the boat a little bit better and water's a little cleaner here too with less grass and stuff like that a little bit more room to stretch it out and run it so all around it's pretty fun enjoyable little little boat to just get out and drive it um, and like I said it's a 3S LiPo with uh, 2500 milliamp hours out of the box and if I remember right, I could be wrong, but I'm almost sure it's a 3100 kV outrunner brushless motor. It's direct drive with a little flexible wire drive through a brass stuffing tube. Um, all pretty decent quality stuff and none of it leaks. There's no leaks whatsoever. You know, I've ran it a few times and ran it jumping some of this grass out here. It, it kind of tends to go under and I've never found so much as a single drop of water inside the boat after a run. So that's, that's nice. Nice to see that it all works as intended. We're just kind of playing around here with it and just cranking the steering over, seeing how, how well it handles it. And just kind of just all around driving it just for fun. So at this point, I think, is where I uh, play with the reverse just to show it's not very effective. I mean, it, it backs the boat up. Steering works, but not great. And just a small amount of power is all you need because any more just kind of showers the back of the boat with water. But it's good to uh, get it out of a pinch or clear the prop or something like that. But don't expect to be cruising around or in reverse very far, very, very quickly or anything. But it is a nice feature. And right there, we're just kind of playing around with the whole shot. 
just kind of seeing how quickly it'll accelerate from a stop. And it does get up and, and get on step and move out pretty quick. As you can see there, we did it once again. Um, but yeah, for the price, if I remember right, it's like $159 with a $20 coupon, so you end up paying like $139 on Amazon right now. And that's on Prime. Um, and like I said, everything run it is included in the box. Apart from four AA batteries, you will need four AA batteries for the transmitter. But other than that, everything is included. Um, built and ready to go. And like I said, it's using all hobby grade components. The uh, servo, the motor, the speed controller, the receiver, it's all normal stuff compatible with, with any kind of other electronics you might already have on hand. If you want to swap something out for repairs or upgrades in the future. I would kind of like to see what it would do with a uh, different motor and speed controller that can handle the 4S. And put a little bit more power in it. I'd like to see how far you can push the hole before it gets unstable. Because I mean, it's rock solid. It's very stable as it is right now with the stock setup. But the uh, speed controller is marked for 11.1 volt 3S input. So I doubt it would handle 4S. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to try it unless I didn't have anything to lose. But I don't want to break it because I, I like, you know, just playing with it like it is. It's pretty fun. So until I was ready to upgrade, I wouldn't try 4S on it anyway, unless I was willing to risk losing the ESC. But at, like I said, at this point, I have no intention to swap anything out. So I'm not gonna risk burning it out just to see if it'll handle the 4S battery. Uh, but speaking of the speed controller and the motor, they are both water cooled. There's a little water pickup behind the prop, and it pumps into there and through the aluminum mounting block that is directly in contact with the motor. It cools the motor that way, and then it goes on from there through a water pipe through the ESC's heatsink, and then it leaves that through a little exit on the side of the boat. And it does a really good job. Everything's really cool, barely above uh, ambient temperature. At the end of a run, so uh, I think there's some some leeway. You might be able to prop it up a little bit, run a slightly higher pitched or larger diameter prop, or both, and load it a little bit more without damaging anything. But like I said, just straight out of the box, it's perfectly fine as it is, more than fast enough. Um, and you do get a spare prop, by the way, as well as a little Phillips screwdriver and hex key, little Allen key for tightening the coupling and stuff like that. And here we're just kind of close up, running it, cranking the steering over. Just showing, I mean, you can try as you might. You can run it fast as you want, crank the steering over as hard as you want. It's not going to roll over or spin out or break loose or anything. It just kind of sticks to the water and very predictable. Um, you can see we're still just kind of playing around with that. The uh, instructions that come with it, everything's pretty well uh, easy to understand and translate it well. I'm assuming it was written in, in China. Most of this stuff does originate from China. But if it's a translated manual, they did a really good job of it. Um, you see at this point, we're just kind of running down here, moving pretty ways away just to test the range of the radio system. And I drove it down as far as I could comfortably see the boat and any kind of obstacles in the water that I wanted to stay away from. And with no loss of control or glitches or anything, so it's more than capable there. It is 2.4 gigahertz, pretty standard uh, stuff. I'm not sure what protocol they're using or who manufactures the radio gear, but... Um, now at this point after the run down there, I noticed it was kind of a little bit slower. It felt a little slower than it should be. Although the motor RPM still sounded normal, the boat seemed to be traveling a little bit slower. So you can see here we kind of headed back to take a closer look and as you can see here there is a bit of grass hung in the uh, rudder once again and like I said here's one place where the reverse is useful and kind of back off of it and clean the prop out and get moving once again so now it's back to what you'd expect Running as fast as it should um, now here you can see the boat kind of slows a little bit and hear the beeping on the transmitter as well as the flashing green LED that is your low battery indicator, which is nice, so apparently there is telemetry from the boat back to the radio. Um, 
but it does limit your power output once you hit that low voltage warning it'll limit your throttle this is running max power here and that's just enough to get the boat safely back to shore so now we're back down by the water's edge and we're gonna drive it back and uh, before I take it out of the water I did take a minute just to uh, hold the boat stationary and run the prop up you can see that little water exit there on the side of the hull when the motor's running it's pumping water and it's actually moves quite a bit of water more than I would have expected so I guess that explained why you know it kind of attributes to why it, it cools everything as well as it does um, but see, yeah, I will get it back up on dry land here and take a look inside just to check for any water, especially after that little submarine episode there at the beginning. Um, you see, under the first hatch, you do have a few little drops of water here and there, but that is kind of to be expected. That one, the first hatch is not sealed, it's more, I guess, just kind of a splash guard or just for looks or something like that. But the second hatch is sealed with the latches all the way around. And you see, it's kind of difficult to remove it, it does kind of get stuck down on the gasket which I guess that's a good thing once you pop it loose it obviously it's easy to remove it and you see there everything's still dry inside so we'll go ahead and disconnect the battery and before we turn off the radio you notice once it loses that signal you hear the beeps change and you also get a flashing red LED along with the green one and that uh, the manual states that that will indicate a low signal but I've never seen that with running other than when I turn the boat off you see they were kind of just feeling the motor and the speed controller which again they're barely above amb ambient temperature so everything checks out good um, it's kind of dumping the water out of the uh, water pickup there emptying the water tubes water cooling system we'll go ahead and put the hatch back on and you'll notice I'm just gonna secure it with one latch just for storage until I get back in the house I'll wipe everything down dry it off and put it up for the next run so that's the UDI 018 boat and I do like it please do take the time to check out the affiliate link below and uh, I guess keep an eye out for us to come in the future so see you then